Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, my name is AJ. I'm with Montana Sam Music. Today I'm going to show you how to use a mixer. Um, right now I just got to grab a few more materials and then we can get started. And then I'll also kind of mix this in with a product review of the Behringer. Uh, Xenix 2442 10 channel mixer with USB plug-in. Um, so, let me just grab a cable so I can put in my guitar. So, yeah, first of all, like with mixing, what you really want to do is um, follow like a pretty intense order of operations or else you're going to kind of mess with things. Um, right now what I'm doing is I'm just plugging in um, a T TRS, you can use a TS or a TRS quarter inch, but I'm plugging it into the line in on my mixer. Um, I'll show you, that's where the, it goes on the line in, that's the first step. It goes in there, and then the other end will go here into my guitar. You can use, um, oh, let me unplug it really quick and show you. Because you can use um, a tip ring sleeve or a tip sleeve. The tip ring sleeve has the, the tip here, the ring, which is that little part between the black lines and then the sleeve. Or you can use um, just a TS, which is just tip and then sleeve. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. Um, next, what I did was I just plugged in my C13, which is a power cable, into the back. That's what I've already done, so like I've already set all this up. And then um, I plugged in my Fishman um, into the jack for the um, monitor. Or sorry, for the main out, because I'm just using it as a main out right now. See, so yeah, I'm going to turn it on. Um, oh, actually, let me turn it off, because that's probably not. Let me follow the order of operations first and plug, turn this on first. Okay, so, first we plug in. Um, first we make sure all the knobs and EQs and pans are according to how we want them. Um, the pan, it doesn't really matter. You don't want that up. At, or you, it doesn't matter if it's up or not at first, but you definitely don't want any of your volumes, which are these guys, the faders. This is a Unity Zero. That's that'll give you volume. If it's all the way down here, it won't give you volume. Um, and then the gains, you do not want those on either, because this is electric frequency, and then this is how much sound comes out of the board. Okay, so let me put this back and then grab my. Um, order of operations. Okay, so um, you plug in your XLR to your mic or your quarter inch cable to your guitar because right now I'm not doing a mic, I'm just mixing a guitar. Um, the next thing that you'll do is turn on your mixer. So you can go ahead and boot it up. Right now my mixer is muted, so I'm going to unmute it. Um, I'm going to turn on my monitor, and now I'm going to, you. well, it's different on each, on each mixer, but the concepts are the same. So now I'm going to uh, turn up my volume, my gain a little bit, and solo the channel. Until I get a little bit of color on the side. Let me see if you can, hold on. Let me just move it a teeny bit so you can see. You see how there, that color green is lighting up? If you can't see it, there it is. That's how you know you have signal coming through. Okay. And now um, I just turn it up a little bit. I turn, I turn it more, like no more than halfway, honestly, for a room. This is the more you play it, like. If it goes up to zero, that's pretty. 
pretty good. So I might just tap, turn it a tad extra more. But I'm not gonna bring it up above um, that zero point because as soon as it goes into yellow or red, that's not, that's too, you're sending too much signal into the mixer. Um, so yeah, I just measured my signal. It should be good. Um, okay, so now, let's see, guitar, you play the line, with, do not hit the red, blah, blah, blah. You might need to solo the channel. Okay, yeah, you might need to solo the channel because if the lights aren't showing up, like right now, nothing's gonna show up for me until I press that red button. Then it'll show up for me, but that's because I have 10 inputs on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, I have like more than that, but some of them um, aren't XLR and line ins. Okay, so this is, oh, by the way, this is called an analog mixer. Um, a lot of mixers you can find on the internet for pretty cheap. This one I found from a friend. Um, it's like a $300 or $400 value, but it's also like a really old, like, mixer because it's analog like there's a lot of ones that are digital these days that you can also learn on i would recommend learning on an analog to start um okay so yeah next what we'll do is um we're gonna just bring up the volume now and um oh see that's a little too hot i'm gonna bring my main volume to zero and then this volume is at zero too, but I'm gonna bring it down a little bit because it's a little too hot. So that's how you mix. And I'm also gonna bring down the master volume on my speaker because it could have been the speaker a little bit too loud. If it if I solo the channel, right? When I'm playing it and it's not going above it's not going above into this yellow and red section, then it should be fine. It's different when you plug it into a PA. That um, we can get to in another video because that's kind of a whole other beast in itself. Um, it's different than just using a mixer by itself. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna unsolo it. It's already on, and now I'm gonna mess with some effects. So some of these orange um, knobs on the Behringer Xenex uh, 2442. These ones are effects, so I can change it to whatever effect I want. Right now I have it on reverb. Let me. I don't know why it's not working. Hold on. Um, there we go. Okay, now you can hear it. I think it's because you have to press this button here to set it up. Hear how it has reverb now? It's like kind of echoing. So I did that with the um, effects knob, which is the orange. This is for, if you have monitors, you can ignore those. Um, EQ is really hard. I'm not getting into that right now because there's really no point um, until later. And you probably won't have EQ on your mixer anyways, unless you buy one of these nice ones. If you're starting out, you most likely will just have your basics, um, which doesn't include all these extra inputs. I learned on um, a Behringer that was just two inputs of the XLR and then the line-ins. This is for microphones, this one up top with the three prong. This one is for uh, instrument cables. And then the 
monos hold on i don't think there's a it doesn't matter but pretty much if you play piano it's different so uh but don't worry about that unless you're a piano player you can comment below and i will explain that in the comments um but yeah that's pretty much it and then for compression you can always add in, uh oh i want to actually i want to low cut i would low cut everything um as you can see this button that's for things that are like not bases like if it's a base like you you don't low cut because you know um the bass is like a low instrument but so hear how that changed it a little bit and then i'm gonna add a little compression um just because you know compression helps with the signal being too intense like coming at it um, if I really want to have fun, I'll EQ a little bit. Like, I'm just going to take a little bit out of the highs and a little bit, and I'll add a little to the bass. Um, I don't really know how to EQ super well, but that made it sound a little less tinny. I think I have too much reverb on it right now, too. But now I'm going to play, like, a little excerpt. I'll just play something, and, um, we'll see how it sounds, okay? And that's pretty much how you use it. Um... There's a couple other things that you'll need to do for the, for like computer. Um, but yeah, that's how you use a mixer. And then how you will connect it to a computer is through a U, uh, USB jack, which is back here. Um, this is for a speaker. That doesn't matter unless you have a amplifier that you're going to use also when you're mixing music. But when you're first learning, you usually don't have something like an amplifier because uh, like those can be expensive um but this is the usb it's a to b and um when you're doing that all you want to do is make sure you have the two track to usb button on when you are um, mixing through a computer and then you can use all the skills that i just taught you um through the orders of operations on here on a computer and you can mix through analog instead of buying plugins and instead of buying like logic and stuff like that you can always use um something like this and you can teach it to yourself it's really it, it gets easier um you can learn more but it really depends on what gear you have and uh, what kind of level of motivation you have uh but that's just mixing for beginners um, I know it looks scary, there's a lot of buttons, but really it's just a matter of clicking the buttons as you can, and really a matter of not sending too much signal to the to the board, because as soon as you go above there, hear that? It, it dips into those frequencies where you don't, you don't want, um, which is called feedback. It'll sound like, like, you know, like you can hear it, like, yeah, like that is called feedback, you don't want that. You just want to, you know, hang a little bit below. It really depends on your PA, if you're mixing into a PA or a computer. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's take a listen to something. I'll just play a little, I don't know, now, now when, I'm on, when I'm on the spot, I don't really know what to play, but um, we'll just play a little something and we'll get, we'll just get a feel for what it sounds like. It's a little loud for me. Um, Could be a little too much gain. I'm gonna turn on my gain, solo the channel, and see what it sounds like now. And then I'm gonna turn up my effects. Let's see what else they have on here.
rest of your day or night or whatever you're doing and keep rocking out.